As I said, I first devised and began recommending the Placed Pages workflow back in 2008 when InDesign CS3 first brought the ability to place one InDesign document into another into everyone's hands. When I recommended that, and in that first edition of my Mastering InDesign for Print Design and Production book, I got a ton of comments scoffing at the whole idea. Why would we do this? Why? It's ridiculous. Nobody would do that. Now, a few years later, the Place Pages workflow is commonplace, if you'll pardon the pun, in multi-person shared document production workflows. It also can go a little bit further than just placing pages into a master document and assigning those pages out to other designers. If your workflow could use it, the placed pages workflow can also be used to have different designers working on different parts of the same pages. Here's a simplified example where I've set it up on just one page. I'm not recommending that you do this exclusively on one page. There may be one person in your workflow who's assigned to do all of the ads. There may be one person in your workflow who does all of the sidebars or all of the video work in a digital publication. That person would then create all of the video components for every page of the publication. That person might do all of the ad design and creating the ads and putting them in place throughout the entire publication as separate InDesign documents that are then placed in. And other designers are working on different components from those same pages or spreads, and then those are all placed on top of each other to create a composite page. This works because, well, for two reasons. One, InDesign can place an InDesign document into another InDesign document, and it can place multiple InDesign documents into one master. Two, any empty space, any space of an InDesign page that's not used is transparent. So you could place them on top of each other and have empty areas shine through whatever objects are below. Let me show you how this could work in your workflow. Here's a page in our master publication. We'll call this the July issue. And this one has been formatted for a digital magazine. So all the bits of this page have been assigned out to creatives on the team, to Kim and Mark and Allison. So now we need to bring those pieces in. Hopefully they're finished, but as long as they've been saved once, we can bring them in. So I'll go to File, Place, Desktop, July Issue. So here is the main story. We'll choose Open. And I left Show Import Options checked, so we get this. You can see it's just a one-pager. Hit OK. And it's telling me there's overset text, which is not a big deal because in this case, it's a digital magazine and that overset text is actually going to become a scrolling text frame. And we've got an image that's missing, so we'll need to fix that. And we'll just click in the top left corner up here. Aha, huh. okay, so this is set. There's the main story. Now we'll go back to File, Place, and we'll turn off Show Import Options, and we'll choose News Bytes. And we'll put it in there. Let's go back to File Place. And we'll bring in the advertisement that's going in between them. I'm going to turn off Replace Selected Item. Hit Open. And now we've got this ad, which I'll nudge a little bit into place. And let's turn on high quality display performance, or we can just shift into Preview mode, fix that alignment. Obviously, I'd be a little more precise with fixing alignment, but for this video, that's fine. So here you can see the three different components of the page recomposited, and they're ready to go. If you'd like to see what the pieces look like, I'll open them. So here's the ad, main story, and news bytes. Click Open. And again, got a missing link notification. Here's the ad which was made at size, and then the main story and the news bytes were made using a duplicate of the main publication or the master publications template. So they're made at full size on the page. 
So when they come in, just placing them in the top left corner gets the content in the right area. A change to any of these, maybe we'll change the ads background color to green and we'll pump it up and we'll choose save. And if I go to the links panel, it tells me, oh, this is out of date. Let's update it. There we go. Even better, I'll close the ad file there. Even better, if I click on one and choose edit original, it pops the document open in InDesign ready for me to make changes. Let's make that red. Save, close. Instant update. So now I, as the production manager, can take these finished pieces and do what I need to do with the publication. If I am, for example, the one doing the interactivity features, I'll then open up this main file here, the main story, and edit original. I'll get to work on making this a scrolling text frame. And then I'll turn these button, this button here to listen to the album into an actual live button that links out to the website where you can listen and buy the album. On the news bites, I'll go in there and I'll start fixing the, adding the video and turning these pictures into slideshows and whatnot and whatever I have to do. All this content is right there ready for me. Most importantly though, it could be worked on individually by members of my team without anyone having to wait for a document to be finished by one team member and then hand it off. People can work simultaneously because they're actually working on separate documents that then get combined. Think about how this might benefit your workflow. I'm not saying it's the best way to go for everybody's workflow. I'm saying it's an option. <laughs>